Many electric vehicle owners are in a state of depression due to charging issues and concerns about the range of their vehicles, as electric cars are not yet competitive with gas-powered vehicles. Owners like them often find out the hard way not to do anything. They've had enough and are now converting back to gas-powered autos. The reasons are various, so let's check some of them. Number 7. Electric vehicles are yet supplementary there was tremendous expansion in the electric vehicle market in 2021 and 2022. It wasn't just an era of early adopters. It was a moment when wealthy households were trying out new things. It was a moment when they aspired to be in vogue. However, at what point did these EV owners consider giving up their gas-powered vehicles? No, that's not correct. They bought electric vehicles for fun rather than out of necessity, and they never went electric entirely. Their electric cars, on the other hand, have traditionally been seen as supplementary transportation in such homes. The fact that electric automobiles are typically seen as a secondary or even tertiary mode of transportation suggests that they are primarily used for local trips. For longer and more demanding excursions, internal combustion engines remain dominant. Simply told, these owners didn't replace anything, so they just added another car to their garage, which happens to use electricity as a power source. They never had a serious commitment to transition to the so-called green energy, so in most situations, they're not interested in getting another one. They've obtained their EVs, tried out new technologies, and decided that they would prefer stick to more convenient IC cars. With that in mind, it doesn't surprise that just 37% of Mustang Mach-E owners acquired another EV. On the other hand, nearly half of them acquired another internal combustion vehicle. Things aren't much different with other car makers and models except for Tesla, which still has a high percentage of loyal customers, most likely because the vast majority of zero emissions enthusiasts choose this brand, while others are mostly chosen by customers who put convenience and practicality in focus. Number 6. Charging Failures According to Clean Technica, 70% of those who switched back to gas-powered automobiles cited charging troubles as their main cause. And boy, the problems are numerous. First of all, many of them didn't have level 2 charging at home, so they quickly learned they had two options. Either to add little more than 30 to 40 miles overnight with a conventional power outlet or to bother with fast chargers at public stations, which make running costs much higher. Not only that, over these few years of enormous EV exploitation, we've also found out that public charges are anything but trustworthy. According to one study from the San Francisco Bay Area, it came out that every fifth charging effort terminated poorly in 2023, and we're talking about the portion of the United States with some of the best charging infrastructure. The reasons are varied, including malfunctioning payment systems, broken cords, non-functional screens, sluggish charging speed, etc. So whether they used DC charging speed or relied on home charging, these drivers discovered out that EVs are not viable. More exactly, they learned they couldn't rely on them, even if they appreciated their performance and general design. It's evident that the charging infrastructure isn't just unsuitable for massive electrification. It turns out it can't even stand the current EVs on the road. Number 5. Real-World Autonomy For potential EV consumers, the range is still a huge deal-breaker, and that's totally great. What's not alright is that consumers who acquired EVs expecting that the claimed rage would suit their demands suddenly learn that the autonomy isn't as advertised, not even close. EVs made a significant technological jump over the previous several years, so there's at least a bunch of models on the market with a stated range that goes much over 300 miles. However, experience taught us that these claimed statistics can barely be accomplished for various reasons. Car producers still haven't found out how to make batteries that can survive heavy exploitation and harsh weather conditions. But it turns out that a heavy foot empties out the battery fairly quickly as well. The worst of all are electric pickups since not only can they not carry as much as gas-powered equivalents, but the range diminishes two to three times while under intense exploitation, such as towing, hauling, or off-roading. For example, Motor Trend took an all-electric F-150 Lightning for a test with three different trailers weighing 3,100, 5,300, and 7,200 pounds, and didn't travel far with any of them. The range went down from the promised 280 miles to barely 115, 90 miles respectively. Obviously, electric pickups are still far from being capable enough to replace their conventional counterparts, and we can't imagine anyone buying an all-electric pickup anytime soon. Number 4. Reliability Difficulties 
Contrary to what you've been told, EVs are not trustworthy. If you remember the early days of EVs, one of the things experts were always pointing out was that EVs were simpler than internal combustion automobiles, and hence more reliable. Well, it turns out that reality is a bit different. According to the latest assessment from Consumer Reports, which examined more than 300,000 vehicles built between 2000 and 2023, electric automobiles create 80% more difficulties than gas cars. Charging and battery problems, non-functional infotainment systems, and other tech features are just some of the things that spring to mind, along with build quality, as customers commonly complain about poor assembly and incorrect alignment of exterior panels, interior pieces, etc. With all that in mind, it's no wonder that the percentage of EV owners getting back to gas cars is significant. Just think, for example, how all those Chevy Blazer EV owners felt when they experienced all those troubles with a brand new electric SUV. The models were designed so horribly that even some of the journalists weren't able to finish their test drives. Battery and charging difficulties, together with Chevy's failure to optimize its software, turned the Blazer into a true nightmare. Two months of ownership and less than 2,000 miles were enough for more than 20 issues to emerge in diagnostics, according to Edmunds. But the Blazer isn't an isolated case. Most EVs wind up near the bottom of any reliability ranking, whereas Tesla is the only car maker whose models are close to average when compared to gas-powered automobiles. Number 3. EVs are not cheap to run This was yet another unpleasant revelation. EV owners received, and obviously it's one of the reasons why many of them are turning back to gas cars, EVs have been touted as being cheaper to run than gas cars for a long time. We've been hearing stories about the cost of power and the lack of regular maintenance services such as oil changes and similar things. But it turned out that EVs are not inexpensive to run at all. First of all, when it comes to charging, it's only affordable while charging at home. Otherwise, recharging can frequently be more expensive than gasoline. Then there's the problem of maintenance. EVs may not require fluid changes, but they are substantially heavier. Thus, tire wear is much faster. Then there's the problem of repairs. Of course, most EVs are new enough to still be under warranty, but what happens after a collision? EVs are primarily composed of aluminum. While most parts are made in a way that maintenance is not even conceivable and replacement is required. This notably pertains to the battery housing, which is fairly susceptible and demands a pretty cautious approach when repairing. And while we talk about repairs, let's not forget that there aren't many experienced professionals around. Thus, repair service is normally much more expensive. And finally, don't forget insurance expenses, which are, for obvious reasons, substantially more compared to gas cars. Finally, add that to the MSRP and it becomes very evident why EV owners aren't happy with the thought of acquiring another one. Number 2 still costly. As we've just established, EVs are fairly pricey, so the fact that a huge percentage of EV owners don't plan to acquire another one, but rather go for pure gasoline or hybrid technology, doesn't surprise at all. On average, EVs are still considerably more expensive than internal combustion cars. Over the last year, the average purchase sum was between $55,000 and $60,000. At the same time, buyers are looking for something altogether different. According to Edmunds, potential EV consumers are looking for affordable EVs. 47% of them want an EV that costs less than $40,000, while less than 30% of them are ready to pay $60,000 or more to have one. Moreover, the latest analysis from Boston Consulting Group showed that those who still want to buy an EV want a car that costs less than $50,000 and make 300 miles and can recharge in 20 minutes. Currently, there's just one EV that checks all three boxes. So many of these owners who bought EVs with immature technology are now delighted that they're returning to gasoline. Number 1. It's about type and capability, not power sources. With the exception of those with sustainability in mind, most EV drivers bought their electric cars for practical reasons. They expected convenience, practicality, minimal running cost, and smooth exploitation. Unfortunately, they didn't obtain any of these. The current EV technology is a bit of a letdown, whether it's about range, charging, or overall performance. Just remember the range of the F-150 Lightning we discussed just a few months ago. Charging speed is still not good enough and the unreliability of public chargers further adds to the overall impression that EVs are still miles away from being as handy as gas cars. At the same time, they're more expensive, while the ongoing progress in technology also produces the so-called buyer remorse syndrome. All in all, EV technology is still not ready to take center stage, and thus many owners are getting back to approve and design solutions. 
and that means internal combustion cars. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.